Hi, everybody. Did everyone get some food and something to drink? Did anyone have any shrimp? They're really, really good. I had one before you all got here, just to make sure I got one. Thanks so much for coming, everybody. My name is Carrie Brown. I'm the Executive Director of the Vermont Commission on Women. And I'm just so pleased to be here today to host this event. We have a giant list of partners that I want to make sure we thank. Uh, of course, we couldn't do this without Main Street Landing, and where's Melinda? Thank you, Melinda, for donating me this space. <laughs> kind of the perfect space for something like this. And then I also want to thank Family Values at Work, which is really the main financial supporter of this event. And we also are joined by Hunger Free Vermont, Main Street Alliance, the Vermont Women's Fund. I have a list, so I don't forget anybody. Uh, Vermont Works for Women, the Vermont Workers Center, the Vermont Paid Sick Days Coalition, Vermont Legal Aid, and Voices for Vermont's Children. So we're really kind of representing as many different voices as we can in our partner organizations and then with all of you here in the room you're going to add to this. So as most of you or perhaps all of you know President Obama has convened a White House summit on working families June 23rd in Washington DC and we decided that we really needed to have a lead-up event to this in Vermont so that we could talk specifically about what are the issues that working families are facing in Vermont what some of the work that we've already done to support working families in Vermont, what do we need to do next? What do we need to take with us to Washington to tell everybody else at the federal level and everyone else from around the country? There are several people from Vermont going to Washington to the summit. Who's going? Wave your, raise your hands. Okay. Good. So there's four of us here. I'm going. Eric, do you want to introduce yourself? Just tell us who you are. I'm Eric Warnstead. And I'm hoping there are more that we don't know about yet, and we're going to find them when we get there. Yeah. So um, I don't have to convince any of you of the need to support working families, that trying to combine going to work and doing your job well and taking care of your family and doing that well is pretty challenging. We all understand that that's why we're here. And uh, we're going to hear from several different people who are going to give us some additional perspectives about that today. We're going to hear from Ashley Moore, who is, works in the restaurant industry, and we're going to hear from um, Robin Friedner McGuire, who's going to talk to us about early childhood and some work that's happening around that in Vermont right now. And we're also going to hear from Randy George from the Red Hen, who's going to tell us about from an employer's perspective. Uh, but And then after that, we're going to have a discussion. We're going to have an open, facilitated discussion with all of you to give you a chance to tell us about what you have seen as accomplishments, what you think still needs to be done, and your ideas and your experiences. While we're having the discussion, and at any point, really, I encourage you to jump up and down, get some more food, get some more drink outside, because uh, there's still a lot of great stuff out there. Don't hesitate to move in and out. So um, our very first speaker is someone who we like to brag about a lot, as we're talking about bragging about accomplishments in Vermont, uh, Governor Madeline Cunin, who's really been leading the four here in uh, trying to make workplaces reflect the reality of families today. And I'm very, very pleased that you're here today. And without further ado, I will let you talk more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here and with this impressive coalition. And uh, we have a job to do. We know this is paid sick days or earned sick days makes sense to a lot of us. It's sort of a no-brainer. You know, you shouldn't go to work if you're sick. You shouldn't send your child to child care or school if she or he is sick. But, you know, it's both a health issue in terms of not spreading disease, and of course it's, it's a justice issue in terms of treating your employees like real human beings and knowing that they have lives. It's also an economic issue on the plus side. And as the Red Hen Bakery knows so well, uh, when you treat your employees well, 
they're more likely to show up, they're more likely to be productive, they're more likely to be loyal, so that you actually save money uh, not having a high turnover rate. But that's not what we automatically hear in the legislature. What we hear and what was very pronounced in the last legislative session was that this was a burden for employers and an expensive burden for employers. The good news is that a slow moving but definitely rise in the minimum wage was passed and that is an achievement for all low wage workers in Vermont. But we wish the timetable were a little quicker, but Vermont still is in the lead nationally, and we can be very proud of that. But the story around the State House was we can't do both. We can't pay, pass earned sick days and the minimum wage. And I know the legislators here are more familiar with that story than, than I am because they heard it firsthand. But the truth is the two go together. They do really enable people to stay on the job. You know, sometimes I think all these family-friendly work issues, whether it's paid sick days, whether it's paid family and medical leave, um, whether it's workplace flexibility, all of these really boil down to, and I know we shouldn't always say this, but they do boil down to class issues. If you are a middle wage earner, if you have an administrative position, you have the power to negotiate any of this. Uh, most of these upper middle income, and it's a squeeze on the middle income more than it used to be, can go to their boss and say, um, you know, I need to come in at four to pick up my child from child care. Can I make that time up another time? And they'll say yes. Or my child is sick today, can I stay home? And they say yes. But if you're a minimum wage employee and you ask for early release time or sick time, you might say, yeah, we'll give you sick time. You're fired. And this is not an exaggeration. It actually does happen in some workplaces. So what we were talking about, you know, there's so much conversation now about the, the big earnings gap between the 1% of the 1% and the 99.9% I think I got that right. Um, and one of the ways to narrow that gap and make this a more productive and livable country for everybody is to allow women and men to stay in the workplace. And one of the incentives to stay in the workplace is if you have decent family work policies. And so the question of in sick days is really critical. And I guess we have two tasks. One's, one is we have to deflate the common assumption that this is a, a, an unbearable burden and that is extraordinarily expensive. So I know Lindsay is working hard to come up with data on that. There was a headline in the New York Times about six months ago because they have paid, they have passed the city council and then the mayor de Blasio uh, asked for an even more generous paid sick days law and it went into effect and the headline was the sky has not fallen. So the sky will not fall with earned sick days. We know uh, in Connecticut it is law but limited to service workers and uh, limited to employers who employ 50 or more people. Uh, so we have to make it clear in Vermont that this will work not only for large employers, but small employers. 
And one of the things that will be negotiated, and I know it may be difficult, but I think we should have to show some flexibility, is how small an employer comes out, co gets covered by that law. Right now, it's five people. Is that what the last bill said? Um, we may have to listen uh, on that and then figure out one of the tough decisions is, you know, how much do you give and where is the end point where you would leave out too many people if you raise it too high. But I think there is room for discussion on that. There's also room for discussion on how many days. Uh, New York, I think, has five. Uh, our bill had seven. Uh, so that's another point of discussion. The one of the, we also have to have some clarification. I think the bill and the discussion did not make it clear that this needed to be additional time off for sick days, that you could take the sick days out of a general package. I always forget the term, general combined time off, right. So those companies who have a good program of combined time off wouldn't have to do anything. They would just be able to allow their employees to take that those days as earned sick days. And that has to be very clearly pronounced. I'm sure you, you felt that discussion um, last time around. But there's some good things that are happening. But before I talk about those, the tough part of this is to have a powerful, practical, sensible counter argument to the naysayers. And the naysayers are dispersed throughout the state of Vermont. The big gorilla who does come out of the closet are the chambers of commerce. But it's not only the Chambers of Commerce, it's their ability to contact each mom and pop store throughout the state of Vermont. So it's sort of like going way back in history when the bottle ban was first proposed. It was the mom and pop stores that really said, we can't do this. You know, it's going to be messy, it's going to be expensive, it's going to cost more labor. But there is, there is a way to amplify the voices of the yaysayers. And that's why every organization that is here has to really put on a full core press to tell their stories, to provide the ammunition and the facts about this proposed law. Otherwise, it won't happen. Because legislators have to be assured that yes, there is a constituency out there for paid sick days. And it's equal to, or even more persuasive than the naysayers. And that is how the process works. And you have to attach names, you have to attach letters, you have to attach numbers. And as we know in Vermont, it doesn't take a lot of people to make a point. Uh, I remember in my day, you get three letters and, and a legislator would stand up and say, my people tell me, <laughs> and, and there you go. So it's possible, but it does take work. And I would suggest to you that you expand this group, uh, this coalition, to get formal and positive support from AARP because the elderly have a stake in earned sick days um, in two ways. One, a worker could stay home to take grandmother to the doctor uh, or to the hospital. Uh, the other side, it affects older people, is Older people have to stay in the workforce longer these days than they used to, and they, quite obviously, are more likely to miss a day or miss an appointment and need the assurance of being able to take a day off and still stay in the workforce. 
I ask you to reach out to the disabilities community. Uh, families with a disabled child, again, are more vulnerable in terms of their ability to show up at work three whatever the days are in the year without Saturday and Sunday. I haven't added that up yet, but uh, a disabled child is a good reason uh, when a child gets sick to take that time off. So what I'm suggesting to you, it's not a done deal uh, because it will take a strong, broad coalition. And I think it's important, it's great that we have a few businesses um, who have come out strongly, but we need more. We need more support from the business community and from people in suits. You know, I joke not. <laughs> But it's true, you, you, we want the establishment or a picture of the establishment, uh, cliched as it is, to make the case. It, it is very, very important. Now, this started out as a women's issue, but it is not a women's issue anymore. It's a much broader issue than that. So. It was interesting, this is sort of a little history, but in New York City, paid sick days was opposed by Mayor Bloomberg, and it was opposed by the president of the New York City Council, Christine Quinn, right, thank you, Christine Quinn. And then before the mayoral election, um, a delegation or several delegations of parents, groups like you are representing here, came to Christine Quinn. And lo and behold, she discovered, yeah, there are voters on this side of the issue. And she changed her mind. It was a little late because she didn't win uh, the primary in New York, uh, but Mayor de Blasio did, and he is a strong, I realize this is not New York City, even though some parts of Vermont think Burlington is, um, <laughs> but there is a broad constituency for this. Mayor de Blasio strengthened that law, and he came out for early education, and he got a big budget appropriation from Albany, so much so he doesn't know quite how to spend it. <laughs> Wish that were our problem. but. There is a powerful constituency for these issues, and poll after poll will tell you that. So it's one of the many cases where the leaders do not reflect accurately the voters. The good news is that Governor Shumlin is beginning to come on board, and we're very excited about that because it will take leadership from the governor. That's how we got the minimum wage increase uh, plus legislative support, but it's even though there are three equal branches of government, it's nice when you have two of them on your side. So I think we should work with the governor in every way possible to get as strong and effective a law as possible. I'll just touch on the new early education law, which is great news. Um, it would be interesting to make sure it's implemented well and funded well in the future. Early education is now the buzzword because everything happens much sooner than we ever thought it would happen <laughs> in, a, in an infant's life. I mean, there's even evidence that, that good nutrition for an adolescent has an impact, or bad nutrition for an adolescent has an impact on that girl's eggs. And there is no longer the divide between environment and, and genetics. But we won't go into that or else you'll never hear from the other speakers. But <laughs> let me just say that early education, good prenatal care, the earlier we start, there's no excuse in Vermont for not having home visits for every mother 
uh, for every pre not having prenatal care for every pregnant woman. Uh, no excuse for not having affordable, quality child care for working parents. So, so we have a lot of work to do, but we're going to take it one bite at a time. And paid sick days is the first early education, good child care. That is at the top of the agenda. I'll just conclude by saying often these issues fall to the bottom. They say, wait a second, it'd be nice if we could do that, but we just can't do it this year. Well, we've got to become more aggressive and more demanding and not let these family issues, these children's issues, that will de determine the real future of our state. If children grow up poor, malnourished, without good care, we will all pay the price. So this is our true investment, and it's one we can afford to make, because when they're grown-ups, they'll be healthy, productive, contributing citizens. So thank you for your work, and thank you for your promise to work even harder. <laughs> Everybody. Um, thank you all for being here. My name is Ashley Moore. I'm 22 years old and I currently work in the restaurant industry um, and I don't have paid sick days. I recently graduated from UVM and I'll be attending graduate school in the fall. Um, while I was enrolled at UVM, I worked multiple part-time jobs and worked full-time during my breaks and vacations in order to support myself and pay for things like rent, food, utilities, gas, health bills, and other expenses. And I had loans, grants, and scholarships cover my tuition expenses. Um, throughout the past year, I was engaged in the efforts to pass paid sick days for multiple reasons. I've always worked in low-wage jobs, and I've seen firsthand how many young people, including myself, are working to support themselves through school or support themselves and their children. In particular, in my experience, people often think that young people are working solely for pocket money, but it's not the case for me, and it's not the case for dozens of my friends and coworkers. The reality is that times have changed. More and more young people are joining the workforce in order to support themselves through school, support their children, and pay for other needed expenses. In Vermont, Two out of every three college graduates have student debt, and Vermont ranks sixth in the U.S. for highest loan debt, with an average of $28,391 owed per graduate. Everyone who works deserves essential benefits like paid sick days so they can take care of themselves or a loved one without fear of losing a day's wage. The way things work in the restaurant industry and in other occupations too, People just don't get paid sick time. It's not that these are bad employers, it's cultural. Uh, for example, if I have the stomach bug, the flu, or a debilitating migraine, like everyone does at one point or another, then I'm expected to show up, push through, and still do my best work. Only once did I ever try to call out of work when I had a migraine, but unfortunately there's no system in place to make this feasible it will require a cultural change, which will be spurred by passing legislation. I've never missed a shift, and I've gone to work sick more times than I can count. I've seen single moms have to bring their child to work because they were too sick to go to school, but too young to stay home alone. The reality is that low-wage workers aren't encouraged to stay home when they're sick, and they can't afford to lose a day's wage. We all get sick, and we all have to care for ourselves and our loved ones. Thank you all again for being here. I'm really excited to um, work with you all and see you all again in the near future. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having me here today. It's uh, really pretty amazing to be able to be a part of this event. 
My name is Robin Friedner McGuire. I'm the campaign director of Let's Grow Kids, and we are a newly launched public education campaign about um, how to uh, about how important the early years are. Our goal is to reach out to Vermonters to help them understand what is happening developmentally um, with children ages zero to three and zero to five, um, so that your average Vermonter can appreciate all that's going on with um, young children during that time. And the reason why we launched the campaign is because we know that Vermonters have very little understanding about what's happening developmentally between the ages zero to three, that really basic interactions are very important to healthy brain development, social emotional development, preparing children for kindergarten, preparing children to be successful later on in, in their life. And so we really want to connect with people to help them understand that because we view that time period in life to be an opportunity for us to make better investments um, in our children. Um, one of the things uh, that we did recently, we had an opportunity to participate um, with the, in, the, in a workshop with the Vermont Businesses for Social Responsibility. And um, somebody asked the question, why does this matter to businesses? Well, we know here in Vermont that 70% of Vermonters who are working have children under the age of six years old. And what that means is that their children are um, in out-of-home care uh, while their parents are at work. So parents deserve the right to be able to go to work with peace of mind knowing that their children are in an environment where they are receiving quality experiences and where their development, their healthy development is being supported. Um, one of uh, our uh, panelists who sat with us was Mark Curran with uh, Black River um, uh, Produce and he was amazing. He could say the reason why it matters to him as a business owner is because fundamentally he has a hard time recruiting people to his business because there are issues with um, uh, getting high quality, affordable child care in his area and his employees couldn't rely on high quality uh, child care in his area. He also talked about and made the connection about the fact that he knows that um, uh, his, his employees need to have good early experiences um, in order to be able to negotiate with their vendors, um, in order to be able to do the types of jobs and tasks um, that they need to do in order to be successful and to be reliable employees. And so he spoke a lot about that. Um, we're very lucky here in the state that, um, that Vermont does recognize um, high quality affordable child care to be very important for the workforce um, just recently. I think you all know that um, uh, the legislature had um, extended the um, child care financial assistance program in the reach up bill um, to families who um, move off of um, uh, reach up for one year. So that's really wonderful. Also somebody talked a little bit earlier about pre-K and the fact that we passed legislation um, uh, that offers 10 hours of voluntary uh, pre-kindergarten for uh, young children. So we view those as right uh, steps in the right direction, which is wonderful, but we have a lot more work to do to support children and their families, and particularly working families here in the state who have to rely on out-of-home um, care for their children, whether that's their grandparents or their next-door neighbor, or if it's a home-based provider or center provider, we really need to create quality opportunities for children and also for um, us to uh, do a better job in uh, a, creating a workforce um, that will thrive um, and uh, contribute to Vermont's um, economic, uh, economy. So thank you for this opportunity to let, be here. Hi, Randy George from Red Hen Baking Company. Um, we, my wife and I own the business. We started in 1999 and um, about three years ago, uh, a little over three years ago, uh, started offering paid sick days to employees. Um, it w one of the things that was interesting to me is that I, in the, in, after being involved, while I was involved in the paid sick days campaign, discovering that actually it's not unusual for an employer to offer 
uh, paid sick days. And it made me realize that really what's going on is that I, having, having worked in the food industry all my life, it, I was just starting to discover that it does have to do with this class issue that Governor Kuhn was talking about. It's, um, there are certain types of jobs that you do that you just, you just don't expect to get um, certain benefits like paid sick days. Um, and since we have instituted this, and along, it, to me it goes along with um, continually increasing our pay scale. Um, it, we used to separate paid vacation. We offered paid vacation before we offered paid sick days. Now we've combined that, um, partly from what we learned in the, in the campaign with, for paid sick days. But as we've added all these things, I've seen this amazing transformation in, uh, in terms of how people, I, I think the, the, the people who work for us uh, who are also pe people like myself who've done this kind of work all their lives start to realize, oh, this is, this is valuable. This is actually something I could make a career out of. Um, it's not something to get from point A to point B and then, and then you'll find a real job. Um, and, you know, that's a, that makes a really big difference to me as a, as a business owner to be able to uh, have, have a staff that is really dedicated to what they're what they're doing. Um, that of course means that they want to stay, but then while they're there, uh, they're applying themselves in a completely different way. And, they, and it's, it's pretty, um, you know, we have a long way to go as a business and, and um, we're going to keep on working on improving everything that we can do for our employees. But even having seen what we've done, uh, the kind of people we attract and uh, the length of time people stay with, with us has really changed. And, and and then also just that feeling of um, people feeling valued and being supported. And when we started out, uh, my wife and I weren't married. We didn't have uh, kids, and neither did any of the employees that we, uh, that we employed. Um, now we have many employees who have children, own houses, um, gotten married while they're, all these things have happened while they're working for us in many cases. Um, and so it's also, that's, that's also uh, kept the pressure on us to, to keep it up. Uh, to, um, that meant at some point we had to provide a place for uh, lactating mothers to uh, <laughs> express milk. Uh, as, and and uh, it was, it was we're, we're actually in the process of doing a little uh, renovation at the bakery. Uh, which will include a, a, a new expanded break room, uh, and and off of that we're doing um, what we had been referring to as the lactation room, and then the electrician came around. And I was showing him what we had to be do, what we had to do, and I explained what that room was for. He said, "Oh, we've done many of those. That's an expressing room." Yeah, we know all, that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Never heard of it. Uh, we're we're adding uh, we're, we're, that that room will also get utilized for uh, massages. That we, we have a massage therapist who comes in once a month. Uh, that's something we just added recently. So all these kinds of things go along. I mean, in, in, for an industry like ours, uh, this is the to me uh, this is the kind of thing that we need. It, it gets back to that that uh, class difference. We we seem to have this ingrained expectation that. Well, there are just certain jobs where you're never gonna you're never gonna get ahead. You're not gonna get certain benefits. There's you know there's a there's a glass ceiling when when it comes to pay, um, but there isn't much in this world that isn't uh, worth doing, I believe, uh, and it's it's just what our perception of of that is, um, and and there isn't much really that doesn't take a lot of skill, um, from you know baking bread to Operating a forklift uh, and on through, you know, all the upper management things that we that we continue that we normally think of as, as highly skilled, but all of these other things uh, that are done by employees that don't normally get these benefits are are things that we need to start to value. So, thank you.
because uh, I am a father fighting for paid sick days. So. <laughs> So, uh, and I'm very fortunate because I'm actually a father who enjoys paid sick days through my employer currently. So I'm lucky to have that. Uh, and I'm also, uh, I am a working dad. So my kids are here with me today because my wife works in town and I had to be here. And when there's nobody to pick up the kids from daycare, the kids come with you. So um, this is an issue I think that resonates with a lot of Vermonters because so many Vermonters um, are looking to have the same kinds of opportunities in terms of uh, flexibility in the workplace and security in the workplace that leads to greater opportunities uh, for those same families. Um, you know, I think back to the successes that Vermont has had. Equal pay, minimum wage, progressive welfare reform that helps families succeed. Those are just a few items that have recently been enacted in Vermont, and it's all thanks to the work of our hardworking legislators and a governor who signed these bills into law, and it's going to make a difference for a lot of families. So the people in this room and the coalition of people in this room deserve a ton of credit for making that happen, and there's a lot more to do. What's that? Can, can I actually see, uh, this is a good suggestion, <laughs> can we have the legislators in the room who worked so hard this last biennium, please just stand up so we can get a sense of who's in the room. And I want to thank you for your work. You guys put in a ton of hard work. Thank you. And I'm going to invite Lindsay Delorier, who worked so hard with the Paid Sick Days Coalition, to invite uh, all of us into a conversation, a dialogue um, about sort of what some of these successes were in more detail, and, and also what are some of the challenges that, that you all foresee uh, coming up. Um, but I think it's also worth noting that um, you know we made significant investments this year in anti-poverty programs. Over $4 million in combined state and federal funding in anti-poverty programs in the governor's budget. Huge accomplishment. Almost never happens. And that's going to help turn the tide. And it's also the investments that lawmakers made in crafting legislation that deals with these problems head on. And really what you're talking about is you are helping to solve the problem of income inequality in this country and in this state. Because that's what it's about. All of these various pieces are helping to build in the financial supports that working families need. That's what this White House Summit is about. That's what this event is about. And that's, I know, the work that you all are about. So thank you very much for doing that. And Lindsay, I don't know if you can just step up and lead us through your vision of how you want this dialogue to work. But we have tables, and we have postcards, and we want to engage you. mention them quickly so that you sort of know and then I'm just gonna ask you guys to share um, some of the positive things that have happened and also some directions you think we still need to go in so on your tables you'll see uh, got leave so if you pick up the little got leave cards you'll see that they're actually postcards that recognize a couple of accomplishments that Vermont has made recently and there's an opportunity there for everyone to write down what's important to them that we still have to do and things that we'd like to see on the national level. And the delegation from Vermont to the White House Summit will bring these with us and deliver them um, to the president in DC. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, <laughs> and um, we also have some petitions that you can sign. There's a, in the middle of the table, a pretty simple petition, um, if you haven't already signed on to the Paid Sick Days campaign, we would love you to officially sign on your support. A big part of it is being able to call you when we need you, to ask you to call your uh, representatives and legislators um, and senators. The other is um, the early childhood campaign that Robin talked about. You'll see there's a pledge there. Um, and so you can sign on to that pledge to indicate your support for these efforts around helping Vermonters to understand the importance of early childhood and um, to stay informed about the efforts and work that that campaign is going to be uh, engaging in. And then uh, Chris Curtis, 
Thank you for pointing out another action, which is if you are a father, we're doing a Father's Day action. It's a social media action. And if you're a father fighting for paid sick days, we also have one that's fighting for family leave and one that's fighting just for work, workplace uh, family friendly uh, values in particular. We'd love to get your picture with that and share that with our national coalition who's doing this um, social media action for Father's Day. Hashtag, is it working families? Hashtag working families. Um, and then finally, on, on most tables, and I, didn't, I actually didn't realize how many tables there would be, so I didn't bring quite enough for every table, but <laughs> on, <laughs> on most tables, um, in the middle of your table, there are some sheets. If you have a personal story relating to any of these issues that you're willing to share, um, there's an opportunity for you just to note it down or even just put your name on that and then we'll note it to follow up with you. So those are all the actions that you can take today to do something to move these issues forward and to sort of get the juices flowing. We thought we would invite uh, anyone here to talk about some of the things that they did this past year. So uh, you know, we look sp to the legislators to talk about some things that they're proud of from this last biennium. We look to employers who are here to talk about some of the policies that they're implementing in their workplaces that they're proud of, pushing the em envelope forward on workplace policies, workplace practices. Um, so let's start with that and then we'll start with the celebrating and then we'll talk about next steps. I'll call people out. <laughs> <laughs> just 
got word not too long ago that the Finally Eagle Research Institute is studying this to scale nationally, which would be a really nice um, alternative to predatory lending. Um, so it's very inexpensive for an employer. I offer it, I pay $100 a year to have this available. The loan is not my responsibility. It's between the employee and the credit union. They get to get banked. They start to build their credit or repair their credit. Uh, it's been really extraordinary, and many credit unions across the state are now offering it. If you want more information, um, I can get it for you. Or Rhino has it on their website. It's pretty great, so we're really excited about that. started in our committee a few years ago. And more recently, we were involved in raising the minimum wage. I need to get up where I can see everybody. Um, raising the minimum wage uh, was in our committee, as was the pay sick day bill. And um, I was pleased to see that while the minimum wage bill wasn't as high or as fast as we'd like, that we got one going this year. And it looks to be the highest state wage over time in the nation. That's an important start. Um, paid sick days, we got it through our committee. Um, and it was a strong vote in our committee. And there was a lot of support in the House, but it did stall in the House. And we need a lot of community support uh, from employers and others to, to really make it happen next year. So um, I'm grateful for you all being here. I'm grateful for Lindsay's work. Um, and the coalition, and um, please keep it going because we, we really need your help. Thank you. Other celebrations, other things, Senator? My name is Michael Sorokin, and I'm a senator from Jim and Cow. We have the fifth seat of Bradley and Wife Sally Fox in February. Um, my history is uh, it was. 30 years as an advocate in the building, um, mostly for seniors and labor groups. And uh, this turnout and what happened this year was remarkable for my personal experience because we actually worked on paid medical and family leave probably about, feels like 10 or 15 years ago. We actually got it through the Senate. Uh, the business community was not uh, as opposed at that point because they didn't have to pay for it because we were piggybacking on with President Clinton, well, I guess it was President Clinton, so it was more than 10 years ago. He uh, enacted a rule that allowed for what was called baby UI, which allowed people to get unemployment benefits or taking time for sick leave or uh, uh, at least maternity leave. Our bill would actually be further than that. Um, but two things that are remarkable that we should celebrate. At that point, we had trouble even believe it or not, I was looking around this room, getting the support from women's groups in the state because the governor was opposed to the bill and he exercised his power there. But secondly, we had a public hearing, Senator Bartlett had a public hearing, and we reached out to the labor community to come to the public hearing, and not one person showed up for the public hearing. My partner, Adam McCrasson, found, he found a pregnant woman on the street. <laughs> <laughs> her testimony. <laughs> um, but now you can see what's happening here. And I'm convinced that I'm a, what's called a seasoned lobbyist. I'm convinced you would have had paid family leave this year if it wasn't for the minimum wage. Governor Cunin talks about we need to do them together. But there was a sea change in the course of a week in that building as to what was going to be the labor or the family issue 
for that year. And it's hard for politicians when they get beat up by the business community to do too many things in one year as the governor said. And when the governor signed out to minimum wage all of a sudden, the speaker signed out to minimum wage all of a sudden, and then there you have it. So uh, that's, I think, the down and dirty on what happened this year. So I think you you are well positioned next year, especially with the outcome and the support you have in this room and, and the leadership you have. Thank you. So uh, my name is Nick Carter. I'm really proud to be here on behalf of Planned Parenthood of Northern New England. And uh, a victory I'd really like to point out, particularly because the bill signing was just down the hall a couple of days ago, what? was the passing of S-239. That was a bill relating to the regulation of toxic chemicals in Vermont products. And the passing of this bill really demonstrates that public health is a priority. And they can pass meaningful legislation in the state of Vermont that really elevates access um, to legislation that promotes sound public health policy. And that bill, you know, there's a lot of opposition to it, particularly from the uh, business community, legislators, all of whom um, are in the room today, as well as folks like Melinda, um, really made that legislation happen. And I see paid, paid sick days and Planned Parenthood's involvement as a direct um, relationship to sound public health policy. So it is possible. We did it with um, toxic chemical regulation, and we could do it with paid sick days. So um, I, I see a lot of what made that bill possible is what's going to make paid sick days happen next year. Thanks. I was actually going to say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Asian Planning has been providing paid sick days for 30 years now, and our employees stay with us for years. I mean, this is something we did 30 years ago. Um, and I, I went down and I testified at the State House, and there were hundreds of folks there in the red t-shirts who came out and spoke for this bill for paid sick days. And when I left that room that day, I was positive that this was gonna, that this was gonna happen. And then all of a sudden, folks started showing up in the small um, mom pa stores and the chambers, and all of a sudden, it just started to fall apart and disappear, and then it wasn't brought to the floor. And I totally understood why, but I kind of wish that it had been so we could have seen who would have voted against it. I kind of wanted to see that. <laughs> and I was kind of mad that I get, didn't get to see those names, but I totally got it. Um, at the end of the day, I know that we can do this next year, but I wanted to mention the, the Vermont toxic um, reform, chemical reform, as we worked really hard on that for years, Ginny Lyons. Because when you have a child with an intellectual disability, I have a grandson who has um, severe autism. When you have a child with a severe intellectual disability, which a lot of these children, it's the result of toxins in our environment, the neurotransmitters that are also killing our bees, the Roundup that people use so frequently on their, on their lawns. This bill is so important because if our children can be protected from these chemicals, they're gonna be healthier and they're gonna be able to live normal and productive lives. Otherwise, they won't be able to, to do that. So I just wanna let you all know that this was really important legislation and thank you to all of you for making sure that that happened this year. Thank you. I just want to add something that I learned this week that I didn't know that I think is terrific about Vermont. And as for those going to Washington, I think that this might be something to advocate for. But I got an inquiry from a national think tank about why I, as an employer, made the decision not to do credit checks for purposes of employment. Which I said I didn't really ever make that decision. It never had occurred to me. But Vermont <laughs> <laughs> actually has some fair employment laws that prohibit that. And we're probably, I don't know if we're the only state, but we're clearly one of very few states in the country that prohibit that practice as a, as a qualifier for employment, um, uh, except in a couple of exempt cases around the financial services industry. But it sounds like it's a very common practice across the country and a huge barrier for people, lower income folks who may have poor credit or, um, or any, not even lower income folks, I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, it was just interesting to me that Vermont is a state that actually has uh, employment laws that prohibit that. And I think for those that go to Washington, if there's a, if it, if it comes up, I think, you know, our employers don't seem to have any trouble getting good employees without needing to do credit checks, and I think it's something we could espouse um, across the country as well. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
volume of knowledge over the years. The guy have had a lot of them. The meat in your stomach in one instant. Mm -hmm. I go, I had very good luck with it. And, and one in, in Wyoming and one here in Vermont companies. And uh, the people became treasured employees and good friends of mine. And because I took a real risk and they, they, they've been looking for a job for a long time and were really qualified. I, I don't have the answer. I haven't thought about it until you spoke today. It's just a personal decision I made that I felt good about it, but you triggered it when you mentioned that. That would be, for example, a great story to share on the story. <laughs> <laughs> just to give you an example of what happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, I'm Alicia I'm the director of Gender Sexuality and Women's Studies at UVM. Um, I just wanted to put in a plea for connections between um, advocacy work and legislation and research. Um, we have a lot of colleagues at UVM who are working on things like the collateral consequences of incarceration, um, we're working on the economic dimensions, uh, family leave policies. My colleague Elaine McCray was very, very much involved in the um, equal pay legislation and the part of the equal pay legislation that was really innovative to Vermont, which is about people being able to request uh, uh, salary and wage information and not experience repercussions. Uh, and, and using that uh, bill as an as a avenue into further family leave uh, or family friendly policies. Um, we have a lot of colleagues in political science and economics and history, which is where I am, and gender, sexuality, and women's studies, who really want to be involved and know stuff um, that can be useful to this. So I just want to keep bridging um, and working with all of you. Um, and uh, I'm always easy to find gender, sexuality, and women's studies, GSWS, that's our new name. Um, easy to find our webpage and easy to locate me. Um, and, uh, and I would also put in a plug, since this is a lot of our work, um, to include uh, the gay, lesbian, and trans community um, in this work and to think about uh, queer families um, as well when we're thinking about family policies. Thank you.